Thanks for joining us today, Moedin bin Hindi. Thank you for coming. You were 28 years old when you were appointed as Director General of Civil Aviation. Take That's us right. back to that moment. That's right. Well, I, I was always a government servant. I was working in the customs. And then, uh, for some reason, uh, I was promoted to be the Director General of Civil Aviation, which shook me a bit, but I took the challenge. The way His Highness, the present ruler, Sheikh Mohammed, does is he watches the person, he aims that he is going to be good here or there or there, and that's how he supports him. And without support, it's difficult to go up the ladder. So 28 years old, you received this decree. I understand it, it was an envelope waiting on your desk. Correct. That's right. Letting you know that you're the man in charge to be taking the airport to the next level to build a modern international standard airport. Well, and that was the purpose of putting me in that, in that position. I was very uh, taken away by the, by the decree that was, uh, however, I mean, I always uh, loved challenges and I went to departments where to learn their uh, profession. And I made it very clear, I'm here to serve everyone and work together as a team because no one in the world can do a job by himself. It's a team. Not a lot of people have the perspective of seeing the airport then and now, the old and the new. Well, when I worked at the airport in the customs, we had just one shed on a long table. And people used to come, there were no air bridges. There were a couple of airlines that used to fly in here. They would come. If the custom officer would ask him to open his bag, he would put it on that table and he would open it. <clears throat> and just formalities, wish him, you know, good luck, thank you. And that was it. So once we finished from the airport, we used to lock the airport and the key will be with me one and with the uh, security people one. That's how small, simple. But the efficiency was at that time also good for that time. You come, you walk in, you leave, sit in your car and go. There wasn't any red tape. There wasn't a wait in a line. There wasn't anything. And there was an open sky policy from that time. And you know what open sky policy is. Any airline, any country can fly into Dubai airport. And that was one of the assets that made us to see all other airports would uh, protect their national carrier. And that's where everybody was, was surprised when Emirates Airline was started its flights. They had no protection. There were many airlines that were going to the same destination, like Dubai, London. So Dubai lived on the competition. If you're good, you'll fly. If you literally. Are, yeah, literally. But if you're not, so from here, everything really started to, to look uh, more positive. We started feeling that there was an importance for this emirate. At that time, when all the other Emirates were uh, trying to do the same. However, the whole uh, pressure on making Dubai Airport was based from the late ruler, Sheikh Rashid, and after him, Sheikh Maktoum, peace be upon his soul, and the present ruler who is a pilot and knows what flying is, and he's been around the world, and often he said, in his interview, that I used to go abroad and I always used to dream of making my country the same with trees, with good roads, with good infrastructure. And what he has done, honestly, without being uh, flattering him, that there are very few people in this world like him. His first and last dream is about his country. 
So before we talk about what makes Dubai and the UAE what it is today, <clears throat> go back to the airport. Okay. What are the components that make an airport great? Well, in one word, the services. You go there to go to an airplane and sit and fly and come back, right? You need that easy rules, no red tape, no pressure from you know uh, security people, a clean bathroom, a clean... Uh, a clean, it's important. Clean a bathroom. A clean uh, arrival hall, a clean, you know, uh, going out of the airport to get a cab or something. It has to be presentable. And today, as you see the airport, from what it was, having a key in my pocket to open the, the custom section. And most of the people that used to work with me are, are there, are still present. And one of them is Mohammed Al Abbar. He was working with us, and he has done tremendous work for his Amar. And there are so many youngsters today and then who really had the capability, and they gave everything they had for the government and for the job that they were doing. When Dubai's airport started doing really well, and you were told that it's the leading one in the region, you said that's not enough. I want it to be the best in the world. Yeah, for somehow I, I didn't see any competitors in the Middle East. So I wanted to be the best in the world. As uh, our leader says, I believe in the number one. And I think I gave him that number one, which he wanted. How would you describe the airport today? I, as a passenger, in most airports in the world, I would go to my for my flight, maybe an hour before. But if I travel in Dubai, I'll go three, four hours before because I want to shop, I want to eat, I want to rest, and it's all there. You go to Emirates Airline, and they give you this nice menu. You can have a, a steak, you can have whatever you want. Sushi, you want to have this, you want to have that. It is there, it's comfortable, and a great service. I mean. I'm not exaggerating. You, you travel and you, you know different airports. You know how you are treated. The government was always instructing us to be polite, to be nice to people. Because once you're treated badly, you'll always remember it. And also when you're treated well, you'll always remember it. So both are very important issues that you don't do the first one, but you be polite and you use your uh, welcoming manners to the, to the people. Service here is very different from a lot of other places. Correct, correct. Who, who directs that? It's a, it's a combination of people. It's a, it's a teamwork. It's learning from what the leaders want. If your leader wants that service, asking for the best, the number one, you have no other choice but to be polite, service-oriented uh, staff of the airport. If there's an inquiry, you have to really direct people to that. And it's like going somewhere and you ask, can you tell me where is this or that in Paris or something? Once you find somebody who's directing you, you feel so good about it, but some, some people would not. So most airports in the world are very polite. They have to be polite. Uh, the hospi hospitality in the airline business is a key issue. What is it about the DNA of, of Dubai and the UAE that's made it, well, now the airport one of the, the busiest, definitely in the region, if not globally? Well, Dubai, as you know, the attraction of the world today. And there are so many reasons. There is safety. One of the biggest issues in the world today is being safe in your, in your home, in your, while you're driving, while you're walking. The city is safe. We have a very, very good uh, uh, security people, which is the Dubai police and the Abu Dhabi police and the rest of the Emirates. They are well trained. They have all the equipment to keep the country safe, the streets safe. And today, if you ask me, I want to live in a country which is safe. I can raise my kids. I can have good education good medical care, and good weather. And this is what the UAE is all about.
And you also say that it all comes back to tolerance. I say tolerance is the word that I always use since many years. And I said this word to so many newspapers and magazines, which in my own feeling, that's very, very important to be tolerant of religion, of color, of caste, and then you live in harmony. Look at us, how many, how many nationalities we have here. Hundreds, and we all live in peace. And I think if we want to put in, into perspective, it's tolerance that was here before all the buildings were here. Correct. It's tolerance that was here before the oil was discovered. Correct. It's tolerance that was here before Dubai Airport. 100% what you're saying is right, because tolerance is the religion we believe in. I'm going to religion now, but our religion teaches us to be tolerant. I have to look after seven uh, neighbors, seven neighbors. So you imagine, this comes in our old generation. If they, you are the neighbor, they send you food, and still now they send you food. They look after your kids if they come in their garden or their street. And so it's one family for the neighbors. So the tolerance has been here throughout the old generation as well, much more than it is today. You want people to appreciate today. You want people to understand this didn't miraculously happen. Talk a little bit more about the old times. Share a little more about your childhood and the times that looked very different from what we see today. That's a good question. Any, any uh, country has an old time and a new time where the development hasn't taken such a fast speed. Roads are different. The way of uh, going to school is different. The way you eat is different. And it's a small community. Everybody knows everybody. And in the past, Dubai was a very peaceful place where people knew each other because the number was little. Everybody, if you see talk today, uh, so-and-so is a cousin of so-and-so, and so-and-so's uh, mother was divorced, and so-and-so married her, and, you know, so they are in all interlinked, and they lived in harmony and, and in peace. Obviously, we didn't have the development which we see today, airports, aeroplane. I remember late Sheikh Hamdan, uh, peace be upon his soul, he told us a story about a man who went on a camel to a long time ago to do his pilgrimage in, in, in Mecca. It took six months to go and six months to come. So these are the hardships that people used to face in the olden days. That was not my era, but things were different. We didn't have big supermarkets. We had small garages, as they call it, we used to buy from there. There was a fish market, small and vegetable market, small and data. And life was very, very simple. There's wealth was not there as abundance. Few people were rich, but not everyone was rich. This is what I remember. And today, the opportunity of becoming rich is in your hand. In your hand means everyone is responsible. He can go and work hard, work smart. There's a difference between work hard, work smart, work this, and you can make money. Did you grow up in a wealthy family? I could say at that time, a good family. Had enough uh, to live and eat, but not as today. In the past, 100,000 used to be a lot. Even cost of living was different. Price of land was different. If everybody knew what was the cost at that time or what the cost was going to be, they would have bought land, 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 honestly. <laughs> It's an amazing uh, phase that uh, the property has taken and uh, sprung to, to such big uh, price. Do you miss the old days at all? To be very Some honest, to be very honest, the old days was nice and peaceful and beautiful for that time. But we didn't have so many things that other people had. Today, we have so many things that other people don't have. So, yes, there was a fun at the old Dubai, but what's transformed into this big city, I would say today is, is a blessing what we have. So if we have to narrow down, what makes Dubai successful? Well, as I said, the word tolerance, uh, we're using it a lot of time, but 
if there is no tolerance, there is no harmony in the community. So the tolerance is doing that. Secondly, people admire what is in Dubai. There is all ca class of uh, buildings. There are cheaper flats, there are medium price flats. So people who have come here, and I know them personally, honestly, I don't want to take names. They came with like 500 dirhams in their pockets. And today they are billionaires, not millionaires, billionaires. I can name you so many from all over the part of the world. You think these opportunities still exist today? It still exists till tomorrow. And tell me why. There is so much to do. For our, uh, our uh, ruler, Sheikh Hamad, this is the beginning. He has a plan for 50 years ahead. This is the and beginning. And a budget. And a budget. A huge budget. I think what's incredible is that every time you see the advancement of Dubai and say wow about what it is today, everyone has the same reaction and says this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And many people say, we want to take Sheikh Mohammed to our country to, to make it like Dubai. We want a ruler like him. I, I mean, amazing. What he's done, amazing. And I tell you to do this, you need what he has done. You need courage and you need persistence and asking nothing but the best. Where is your appetite today? What's your next big project? Well, I have a lot on my agenda. I also uh, don't get satisfied with just anything. And I want to create a lot of other businesses. And uh, it's going to be uh, something that I love doing. And uh, hopefully uh, it will take shape as soon as uh, things get together. And probably I'll, I'll surprise you in a couple of uh, months or let's say maybe a year, I will do that. And it will be uh, talk of the town, I'm sure. Mawadeen bin Hindi, thank you so much for today's conversation. Thank you very much for you. It's a pleasure meeting you and a pleasure sitting here talking to you about the past.